Kel. How are you? Doing great. How are you, Katie? I'm doing pretty good. I'm super excited to have you here to be talking about your experience as an early in profession developer, especially one who's using .NET. So thanks for making the time. Of course, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for the invite. Of course. Uh, So before we get into any of my questions, I have a whole long list for you. So I'm hoping we can get through as many as possible. But before any of that, could you give us a little bit of an introduction uh, to yourself, maybe how long you've been a developer, a little bit about how you got started, that kind of thing? Yeah. So I work on the .NET runtime team, and I've been on that team for three years, a little over three years. And I graduated from college from Brigham Young University in applied math and then started my internship, excuse me, my full-time role after doing an internship the summer before I started my full-time role in July of 2021. Oh, nice. So you and I are really similar timeline-wise there. I also did an internship before joining full-time and applied math. That's super cool. So did you do any programming as part of your um, degree or was that kind of a later thing for you? Yeah, so I took some C++ classes to learn how to code. I hadn't ever coded before going to college. And then I started taking Python classes that were more like algorithmic and math focused. So that's how I learned how to code. Oh, nice. I They also started us with C++. I feel like that's one of the de facto starting <laughs> languages, especially at um, universities, but it's quite an experience to learn, I will say. Um, so you mentioned a little bit about your role here at Microsoft. Can you take me through that a little bit more? Like, what are you doing kind of on the day-to-day? What types of code bases are you working with? What does that look like? So our day-to-day on the .NET runtime team, there's a few different teams. And the one specifically that I'm on is the diagnostics team. So our team is in charge of helping developers have the tools that they need to diagnose issues in their apps. Because we all know that the one thing that's the same about every app is that you're gonna have issues and bugs. So my team's in charge of eventing and tracing. And we also have the debugger that if you ever use .NET or C Sharp um, in VS Code or Visual Studio, that debugger hooks into the APIs that my team codes. So day-to-day for me looks like debugging the debugger which has been kind of fun to um, figure out because the debugger was kind of always a black box for me, but now I understand it more because I spent a lot of time working with it. Wow, it's like the matrix, you're debugging the debugger. (laughs) (laughs) That's so cool. Did you have any experience with that, with the kind of work that you do today? prior to your job or was that something that you learned along the way? It was definitely something I learned along the way. I had never um, used C Sharp before and our code base is around 20 years old. So it's not only did I need to learn how to code in, we use, we use C Sharp and C++, which I had had some experience with C++, but not only the language, it's also like all of the different objects and data structures that are used within the runtime it kind of feels like a whole nother language as well. So to be honest, when I started, I was super overwhelmed and was like, what in the world is going on? But that's okay because I have a fantastic team who knew that that was going to be something that would happen. And then they take the time to 
make me feel comfortable, to ask questions, and to provide me with information. I have like one-on-ones with my teammates, and they teach me about different portions of the runtime. Or, for example, within the debugger, well, how do you set a breakpoint? And so I can go and talk to my teammates about, okay, here's what I've seen in the code. And then can we talk about how it actually works? So overall, it's been three years of an immense amount of learning that I, I look back and I sometimes can't believe how far I've come because I remember being super overwhelmed at the beginning. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, that sounds like a, a lot to kind of have to upskill on. You know, you have everything you learned in your degree, but actually applying that to a real code base. And as you said, it's one that's 20 years old is pretty intense. And I, I'm kind of assuming that a lot of the people watching who may be looking for a job are thinking, you know, how do my, my skills that I learned in my coursework or online, how does that apply to the job itself, as well as how long can I expect it's going to take for me to onboard? So can you speak to that a little bit? Like, how long did that take for you to start feeling comfortable? Um, and what kinds of skills was it helpful to have going in? Um, one of the... Well, there's probably two or three skills that I'd say have been really helpful. Um, first, knowing how to code is the first thing because I do a lot of reading code and like following the logic through the code to recognize different patterns. Um, it's also helpful now that we have a co-pilot because I can have a conversation with co-pilot of, okay, here's what I think is going on. Could you um, help to verify that or not? Of course, taking everything with a grain of salt, but it doesn't really matter what language you know, mm. so long as you're comfortable in the code. And then another skill that really helped with my onboarding is I am not afraid to ask questions. I knew that I was coming from applied math where I didn't know how the computer worked at all. And sometimes we even work on my team, we work as low level as the registers and how you get the context from the registers onto the threads. And so I had a lot of learning to do. And because I knew I had a lot of learning, then I was just happy to ask questions. And I think that's something that's really important to know as a student that yes, you're learning so much in school and these classes are important and there's lots of skills that you can learn. And with that said, you're gonna continue to learn on the job. So you're not expected to know everything. If you feel like you don't know anything, that's okay. Just do what you did in school of asking questions and figuring things out. And that's what you're expected to do in your job as well. And then I think the third thing that's been really helpful for me is sometimes it feels like, you know, this could be a really hard problem to work on. And do I know enough to work on that problem? And the times that I've been able to learn the most has been when I've seen that there's a hard problem and then I choose to work on it because it's difficult and of course like impactful. And then I'm able to ask questions. And in the last year, I've been able to work on some of these hard problems. And that's really where I've seen a ton of growth in my onboarding is from taking those challenges. Wow. Yeah. I I can pull out a couple of different things that you mentioned there that I found super insightful. I think the first being, you know, you mentioned it doesn't matter what language you know, once you get into the job itself, especially as somebody who's earlier in profession, they know that you're going to have a lot to learn. So as long as you know the basic structures and can kind of follow along, you can learn the, the nitty gritty, the syntax of the language. Um, Amen. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think beyond that, I really liked your advice, both around not being afraid to ask questions, because I see that in myself a lot. I sometimes I'm like, oh, darn, I'm supposed to know what this is. Like, I can't ask about it. And that's just making it way harder for myself. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, um, not being afraid to dive into the hard thing, because you're just opening yourself up for uh, an additional learning opportunity. And I think that 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 can be hard to get over mentally, but it's really cool that that was kind of something you did out of habit and were able to learn from. So that's so cool, Mikkel. That's awesome. Um, as a follow-up question, I know we've been talking a lot about kind of what it's like in your day-to-day -day and, and how you were uh, onboarded and what that was like. I'm also wondering a little bit about your interview process. Like I'm sure a lot of the people watching maybe haven't gotten that first job yet. And I'm wondering what the process was like for you and, and any advice you might have for those folks. So my interview process happened, like I kind of mentioned earlier that I did an internship after my junior year of college. And then after the internship was offered a full-time position. So the interviewing process for my internship looked like after submitting my resume, and then I didn't hear back for probably a couple months. I heard back and my first interview was in person and it was a whiteboard style question. I think I might have written pseudocode. So just the interviewer had a question and I was to talk out loud and explain my thought process, but it was in pseudocode. So syntax didn't matter. And the second question was more of a like puzzle kind of question. So it wasn't necessarily about coding, but just to explain my thought process to see how I think. Um, and so I think what helped me be successful in that was that I had been practicing talking out loud and explaining my thought process. So I was comfortable when that interview came. Mm -hmm. And then after like a couple more months, I got another interview call back and this one was remote and I, we did more coding things. So, but it was like a similar thing where talk about why I'm coding and explaining my thought process. Mm -hmm. Did you, so you mentioned to kind of prepare for that style of interview, you did a lot of practice walking through mm -hmm. and explaining your thought process. I'm wondering, did you use any particular resources or, or tools that helped you with that preparation? Yeah. So in addition to uh, like hacker rank or elite code, there, <laughs> yep. There's also a book that I found. It's like coding interviews for Python because that was just the language I was most comfortable with at that point. And I would go through this book and they have different questions. So I would imagine, I don't remember, but I'd imagine it's kind of similar to Hacker Rank or Elite Code. Um, and I think the important thing is to not just go through those problems, but to go through them as though you're there talking with an interviewer. Because they don't just want you to know how to code, they want to understand your thought process. So that's why it's so important to explain as you're going through, okay, the reason why, you know, I'm gonna start with a for loop because I think that if I do this, then I'll be able to get this variable. And it's okay if you don't get the first, you know, the most performant code at first, you just start somewhere and iterate on where you start. Yeah, that makes sense. And in addition to that type of preparation, was there anything else, like in addition to your resume, did you have any kind of projects that, that you sent along as well? Or was that something you kind of developed through your internship? Um, I think I just sent in my resume, uh, but I had 
I worked on some research as an undergrad that was on my resume and then kind of put a little bit about the classwork that I'd been working on. But the projects that I worked on were more during my internship. Okay, that makes sense. So we're quickly coming to the end of our time here. It flew by. Um, But as kind of a final question or two, I wanted to ask, you covered a lot of advice both for, you know, when you're starting out with your first job as well as throughout the interview process. Is there any kind of final advice? I'm going to make this a two-parter. Is there any final advice that you'd give to somebody who's earlier in their career kind of starting out either before they get their first job or early in their first job? And as a second, because this is the .NET Comp student zone, is there any advice you have for somebody who's learning C Sharp or .NET for the first time? Um, For the first part, advice for early in career, either before or in first job. I think it's to have confidence in yourself because if you would have told me that I would be where I am right now, you know, four, five years ago, even three years ago, it's kind of hard to believe that. So have confidence that you can do it because I've shared my story of, well, really, (laughs) I was super overwhelmed and had no idea what was going on when I started. And now I feel more comfortable and I'm able to make impactful um, features in the in the debugger. So you can do it too. have confidence and keep practicing and you'll go far. Um, And for someone who's learning C sharp, I think this might be kind of cliche, but there's lots of good um, like videos online with C sharp. And the more you practice, the more confident you're going to get. So that's what I'd have to say. Practice makes perfect. Hey, very sage advice. So I love that. Well, Mikkel, thank you so much. This was super helpful. I'm sure there's folks asking questions in the chat as well. We'll try to get to as many of your questions as we can, but thanks again for taking the time out of your day to record this and and give some, some advice to our early in career audience here. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. All right. We'll hand it off to the next one. Bye-bye. Bye.